Hey guys, uh, I have a special one for you here today. We're going to be doing a bunch of upgrades and stuff like that with this desk, the monitors on it. Um, I'm going to be extending the rack and doing whatever else is on this list of stuff to do today. I'm going to do it all day and I'm going to make it a bit of a social event, which I've never done before, but I think it'll go swimmingly. So get ready for all of that. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's very late. I am tired. It's also several weeks later, and my mustache is gone, but it's not forgotten. I'm gonna get into the time lapses, try and edit. And we're gonna just talk about what I'm doing. All right, so the first step is obviously fraternize a whole bunch and not get any work done until like 3 p.m. this day when this was filmed. But then I turn off all the computers and I'm gonna start with just taking everything off the desk. So that includes all these monitors, the speakers, my audio mixer, uh, whatever else like that. Then I get into taking off all the cables. Uh, my cable management involves me routing all the cables underneath the desk. So I have all of these like double side tape uh, sticky clips um, that are hiding literally like 30 different cables. It's terrible. Don't look under my desk. I often try and avoid looking under my desk because it's so messy. But then afterwards, I start with taking everything out of the rack because the next step will be extending the rack uh, about five inches to accommodate my new Dell R720. So now I'm extending the rack, uh, which really is only held in by a few screws with these adjustable brackets. So now here I am later that night. Uh, of course, I didn't get everything done in a single afternoon because I started so late and just because this kind of stuff takes forever. But I returned later that night and went until like 3 a.m., which is why this footage is sped up so fast. It kind of, it covers like everything, but man, you start to see me fall off towards the end and just like stare off into space for two minutes. But I still was able to get all of the monitors on the desk set up and I started some cabling but that's kind of when my brain started going into mush mode. So I didn't get everything done today but you at least still have the footage of sort of the middle of this project.
At a certain point, when all of the monitors were set up on the desk, I fit everything together and made sure that it looked all right in the room uh, and that I didn't look like an absolute computer uh, hoarder monster of a human being, even though I am that. I want them to discover that naturally as they talk to me and begin to uncover the wonders of my life. But that's enough diddly-daddling. Let's get back to the time-lapse. We pick up again the next day. I luckily had a day off from work, so I'm joined by one of my friends who couldn't make it uh, the other day. But now he's here to drink beer and watch me work and offer no help. Did you know everyone else offered help but he didn't? What a lame friend. Not fun. Not good. And he's also placing the beer on my server rack like a maniac. I mean, who does this guy think he is? I mean, come on. But never mind that. It's done. From there on out, there were still a few things to do. Like, for one, I needed to change out the CD-ROM drive for a very interesting CD-ROM fake drive that actually is just a housing for an SSD so that I can boot off of it. And then I also have to show up my new LTT desk pad, LTTstore.com. 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 Now, there still are some challenges, like the screaming sounds of the Dell R720 fans when it's booting up usually goes away after a little while, but also with the R720, the rails kind of are sort of working, but not really. I kind of have to finagle the server in and out uh, to slide it out of the rack, but I can live with that. Okay, so right now I am loading into the FreeNAS or TrueNAS Core. There you go, the TrueNAS Core installer. And I'm going to run through this. So basically, let's start with this. So what I have is there is one PCI SSD, which is an old, I think, Dell or Intel model SSD. That's going to be not touched. That's going to be used as a cache drive. Um, which is going to help a lot with TrueNAS with reads and writes um, and just making them speedier, uh, especially since I plan to have some storage pools in RAID 1. But then aside from that, I have the sort of like DVD <laughs> drive to hard drive converter thing, and that's going to be my boot drive, which is a really nice, cheap uh, um, SSD that I just had lying around that I'm going to use as my boot drive, which is really only going to handle booting into uh, the TrueNAS Core. I keep wanting to say FreeNAS, but it's TrueNAS Core. Um, and then I plan to have two one terabyte uh, drives in the front bay, and those are going to be for system backups, like my Windows backup and stuff like that. My um, backup from this computer, all the backups are going to go there, and I'm going to sort of have like a uh, uh, what is it called? Like a, it's a copy where it doesn't copy the whole files. It just writes what's new and all that stuff. Um, SCP is what it is in Linux. I'm trying to think of what that. Anyways, two drives, one terabyte that are going to do that in RAID 1. So it's going to be like kind of a backup. I know RAID is not a backup, but you know what? <laughs> it's my house. I do what I want. Uh, and then I have the six other bays. Those are unfortunately only like 600 gig SAS drives. That's going to be my main storage pool. And then I'll probably set up two drives of parity from there. So let's go ahead and I see that it recognizes now I have one SSD, which is the SSD I put into the DVD drive. And then the other eight are the individual drives of the SAS uh, backplane. So, I will install into that drive the DVD sort of SSD thing. I'll set a password that you can't see because my back is towards you. Well, <laughs> passwords don't matter. And 
And then, in this case, the TrueNet boot mode, boot mode. Since this is an old enterprise server, it's probably going to work better if I boot via BIOS. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna create swap. And it should go for it. So I'll be back later when this finishes. So I forgot to record that entire part where I set up TrueNAS. Uh, and th here's the thing, I set it up exactly the same as my old TrueNAS server. Uh, the only difference is it has a bit more storage and a cache disk, but that's it. As far as tutorials go for this kind of stuff, um, there are already really great TrueNAS tutorials out there. Like specifically I can call out Lawrence Systems who goes through a ton of configuration and management stuff. Um, as well as Craft Computing, who basically is the guy who taught me a whole lot of this stuff. I learned from YouTube, and I hope that you can too. So with the new desk, what I basically just did is swapped the computers for my last setup. Uh, I used to have the MacBook Air over here, and I had it hooked up to this 32-inch monitor, but I kind of just noticed that um, if I was trying to do any kind of, you know, watching movies or videos at high resolution, um, having to deal with all of the network bandwidth going through that Thunderbolt 3 cable through the Thunderbolt 3 dock. It just got a little bit too much. Um, and I also have a MacBook Air, uh, Intel MacBook Air. It's just not quite powerful enough to support the graphical use case um, for this monitor. So, you know, it wasn't the greatest experience and I decided that I wanted to kind of move it over. Now I have the Mac just sitting comfortably over here with a much more uh, simple monitor to connect to. Um, and that Mac is pretty much for my, like, my web development projects, which I still do some projects, but not as much as I used to. Um, still that's perfect over there. But then here is the PC, which is rack mounted of course. And then this PC, it still has the GTX 680. Don't have the money for something like a 3080 yet, and I'm not willing to pay scalpers all of that money. Um, but it still runs fine. I mean, it, I'm doing Premiere stuff right now in it, so it's it's perfectly capable for what I intend to do, uh, which is usually a lot of Team Fortress 2, which is such an old game. It will run on anything, so. Uh, yeah, and then, oh, these two monitors, I uh, went through sort of the, the TrueNAS. This is just a VGA cable going all the way to my server rack. So if I ever need to configure or work on a server, I don't have to bring a monitor over here and just plug it in and it looks really ugly. It's just right here. It's all connected already. Um, so it's really easy to do that. And then this is a project I did like two years ago. Um, this just shows me the price of uh, Bitcoin and stuff like that. So we've reached the end of the video, and I really hope you did enjoy this one. It was a lot of fun to set up the events, uh, having my friends over, helping me do all this stuff, introducing them, trying to indoctrinate them into the home lab culture maybe, um, but seriously it was a lot of fun. I don't really know what the point or message of this video is other than you know, this stuff is fun and I think it's helpful to not just go through it yourself, but also, you know, involve your friends if you can, because otherwise computers and talking about all this tech stuff can be kind of alienating. So there you go. That's the message. That's the point. But in all seriousness, I kind of think this video leads is going to lead up to maybe some kind of tour of the apartment and the networking behind it and all the different servers and computers that I've got running over here. Um, and then I think we'll do something about my electronics bench. So yeah, thank you so much. Namaste.